In 2019, I was offered a six-figure job to start my professional career working for one of the biggest banks in Canada. At just 20 years old, I had to make the most defining choice of my life. Do I accept this job knowing full well how much I hate it, but how much people will also respect and admire me for it? Or do I say no? And do I disappoint my boss, my friends, and my family? After a lot of thought, I said no. And it was the greatest decision of my life. Here are the three greatest lessons that I've learned since that happened. There are three things that you will never learn if you decide to work in a corporate job for the rest of your life. And the first one is who you are. Let me be clear, this video is not intended to take a shot at corporate workers. If you love your corporate job, good for you. But if there is even one slight piece of discontent in your job, this video is for you. We are living in a time where it is becoming normalized to accept things that make you unhappy and to just believe that that's life. But this is far from the truth. Before I continue, I want you to watch this. This is by far the biggest reason why you should always always take a chance on yourself. What is a big mistake that you've made or a big regret that you have that has taught you a very valuable lesson in life? For me, my biggest regret was I wanted to be an actor. That was my dream since I was in like elementary school. I was in all the school plays and I had I had a modicum of success like when I was in my late teens, early 20s. I, I was like sort of almost like on the cusp of like making it. I guess I got scared. You know, I need to work. I need to support myself, obviously. I was the quintessential starving artist. I was sleeping on friends' couches. I was bartending. I was a server, whatever, doing what I had to do so I can go on auditions during the day. And I kind of like gave up on that dream and got like a, the typical corporate nine to five job. And that's my biggest regret in my life because that's all I've ever wanted to do was be an actor. And now I have some lame corporate job and it's like, yeah, I can pay my rent and whatever, live. But what is the point at the end of the day? In your life, on average, you will work 90,000 hours. That is, on average, again, one third of your total life expectancy. Unfortunately, most of us have decided to work in the wrong job. When I first got into university, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I just didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know who I was. Truthfully, I was going through a period in my life where things were super uncertain. I had just broken up with a girlfriend and I was very unstable. I didn't know what to do. And so everybody's opinion around me all of a sudden seemed to have a lot more value. When you don't know who you are, it's very easy to become influenced by others and their opinions. I had never taken the time to properly think about what it is I wanted to be, what my purpose was, and things like that. Seems like people were making that decision for me. And I think that's how a lot of us end up in these jobs. My way out is similar to the way out for a lot of people. It's basically when a big decision is looming, that you got offered a contract, a promotion, maybe COVID flipped your life upside down, maybe you got a bonus that's coming up. For me, I got an email that was including a full-time contract to work at once I graduated university. I knew right then and there that this was gonna be the biggest decision of my life. When you're faced with that, what do you do? For me, the answer was journaling. I was never someone who journaled a lot or was self-reflected a lot, at least not on paper. I would look up online different questions, self-reflection prompts, and I would write down those things on a piece of paper and then I would answer them. As I began to answer more and more and more of those prompts, I started to realize, okay, not only was I unhappy, but there was a reason for this unhappiness and there were also things out there that would make me a lot happier that I wasn't doing. And that brings us to lesson number two, which is actually figuring out what you want in life. So when I worked at the bank, my seat was on the trading floor, but I was as far away from the window as possible. The person who was sitting right next to me was also an intern. Him and I would chat every now and then about the job, about life, about just anything. And at some point after I had started self-reflecting, I, I looked at him and I said, hey, why do you want this job? And he turns to me and he tells me, my mom and I, we immigrated from Algeria and she's been working two jobs to support us. And I want this job so I can make enough money so that my mom doesn't have to work that hard and that we can be comfortable. He said that and I, I looked at him and I realized right then and there, like that's a fantastic reason to want to do this. Even if he wasn't thrilled at the prospect of what the job entailed, he had a greater purpose and this job served that purpose. And he asked me the same question. He said, why do you want this job? And I looked at him and I didn't have an answer. I don't know why I would have wanted this job. I'm not sure. I couldn't answer that question. I took that conversation. I went home that night and it was at that exact moment that I knew I was done. The lesson I learned here is that right then and there, I figured out what I wanted in life, or at least what I didn't want. We need to speak to others to put our life into perspective. We are very good at believing things that other people tell us, but not believing in the things that we tell ourselves. And sometimes it takes speaking to a total stranger to remember what you actually want. 
Now, before heading into lesson three, a quick note from the sponsor of today's video, Magical. Magical is a productivity tool that can be found on Google Chrome as an extension. And it's designed to help you reduce your busy work so that you can spend more time doing things that you love. When I started my podcast, I actually used Magical's LinkedIn scraping tool to find key people who I thought I'd really get along with. I found their profiles, and then I used Magical's transfer tool to scrape all of their information into a spreadsheet without needing to copy and paste at all. If you're not an entrepreneur, you can also use this tool to find people in your network to connect with. This used to take me hours every single day to do. And when you work a third of your life and sleep the other third, you only have eight hours to really make the most of it. So having a tool that will save you time is priceless. And to reiterate, it extends beyond just LinkedIn. You can use Magical for data entry, networking, automating your daily tasks, and so much more. So get Magical for free using the link in our description below. Lesson number three completes the trifecta. So I learned who I was, I learned what I wanted, and the only thing left was to figure out how to get what I want. If you know what you want, if you have an idea of who you are, but if getting what you want seems ridiculously tough, then these are three things that I did that helped me make that easier. The first one is a mindset shift. Check this out. If you could give anyone your age or younger than you one piece of advice, what would you say? The risk is not taking the risk. I think a lot of people, they think the risk is quitting their job. Oh, how am I going to pay this and pay that? And really, you're young. What are your expenses when you're young? Like a party or something, right? Like it's never like a real like make or break, have supper with your kids. Like are your kids going to eat tonight? That's when it becomes harder. The risk is not taking the risk. The number one regret I've seen from people my age Mm -hmm. is they didn't take that chance 10 years ago. People don't take the risk ever, but the risk really is again, not right. taking the risk. The second one is understanding privilege. Now all of us have privilege. I think when we think of privilege, the first thought is financial privilege. Oh, he has money. Oh, she has money. Oh, I don't have money. This is not privilege. This is a privilege, but it is not privilege in general. In my circumstance, I went to McGill University, super reputable university in Canada, and I graduated with a BCom in finance. Now, when I was working at the bank, I was thinking about what I would do after I quit. That thought is really scary because I had a lot of safety and comfort and guaranteed money that could have come in. If I quit with no backup plan, which is what I did, I had no way of knowing how to make any money. So when you have those thoughts, you wonder if it's even worth it to take that risk and quit. Now, I thought of my privilege. I said, okay, well, what is the worst possible scenario that can happen if I quit and everything I attempt fails? Let's put it in perspective. If I started Sprouts, which is what I did after I quit my job, and Sprout failed. I spent years for a year trying to figure it out. The worst case is that I lose money. Either I have no more money or I'm in a bit of debt. Now I take all the experiences that I have and what do I do? Okay, I suck it up for six months. I go apply to another banking job. I take that experience. I take that degree. I take the experience of having worked at a bank and would, wouldn't you know it, I'm a more valuable and more attractive candidate than I was before. So to me, knowing that the backup option is absurdly feasible in a way. It's, it won't make me happy, but it's feasible. Well, I will survive. That made it a lot easier for me to take the risk. Now you have to go out there and you have to say, what privileges do you have? You could be born in a certain country, so you have access to all the jobs and all the ability to stay in that country for a long time. Do you have a mentor? Do you have a parent who is an entrepreneur and you wanna be an entrepreneur? Wow, great, you have a mentor you don't need to pay $50,000 for. Think of the things that you have that most people don't have and start taking advantage of them. The third thing is proper goal setting. Now, this is the journal I use, also the, the ones you can see here. In this goal setting journal, I break down all of my goals and I track them super consistently by the weeks, the months, and the quarter. I noticed that a lot of us, we get stuck trying to go from the idea we have of what our dream life is to making it a reality. Whereas what I learned from this book is to do the opposite. It's actually to envision your dream life as your end goal. Take that big end goal and slowly break it down into small pieces to eventually get to one daily task that if you do consistently will allow you to build up and get that big goal. So once I started breaking things down, it became a lot easier for me to take the risk. To be transparent, I currently make more money in my dream job than I did in my banking job. And I think that goes to show Ironically, that money isn't important. When I started being more passionate about what I was spending a third of my life on, it became a lot easier, quote unquote, to make money. The point of this video is not to tell you to quit your job or not to quit your job or to tell you that corporate work is bad. It's more so to introduce you to the fact that 
If you do not quit this job, if you always stay within the confines of your comfort zone, you'll never learn about who you are. You'll never learn about what you want and you'll never figure out the systems and the structures to figure out how to get what you want. Those three questions, if you answer those three questions, you will 100% live your most fulfilling life. This book, by the way, is all about finding the answers to those three questions. So I do encourage you to try this if you're interested in making that journey yourself. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then you're definitely gonna like this video right here. If you haven't already subscribed, please make sure to do that now. I'm Will, and as always, it's a mindset.